So hey guys, it's time for another art tips video. I have not done one of these in about a year because this tutorial isn't gonna take that long because coloring eyes and stuff never take that long for me. And so, yeah, I'm just trying this and trying it in a little different of a format. So hopefully I can get the timing right with the audio because whenever I've tried doing these in the past, they've never really worked out. So let's let's get on to the eye tutorial. Um, but first, let's sketch up some eyes. Alright, so we got our eyes inked and sketched out. I did three different eye shapes. One of, you know, my normal eye, how I normally draw, you know, basic eyes. And then I have more of like an almond-shaped eye here, and then a, you know, modern, round, cartoony eye. Um, eyes have actually taken me a while to get to the style I liked and how I wanted it to be. So, what I always do, uh, people have noticed in my live streams and my, um, commission videos and everything, Whenever I color eyes, well, first of all, um, when I ink and sketch, this is a quick little just tip on top of that. Um, I'll talk more about this in a future video. But um, for me, with someone with very severe light sensitivity who chose a job that requires me to stare at a screen all day, I realized and I saw people talking about uh, how when writing lots of papers, just writing in general, it's really good to have um, the fact that you're not looking at a white LED screen. So... What they would say is, well, the video, the video, the thing I saw was have like a very light green. So what I tend to do when I'm sketching, a lot of people have noticed, is I'll have a lighter color in the background. So I'm not just sketching on white. And that's been helping my eyes a ton. And same with inking. What I do is, especially when you, you know, you're using digital art because it's easier. Um, I ink in a darker shade of what the background layer is. And then I turn it to black later because it's like, boop. Next, what we do is I take usually a red, because I don't usually sketch in red. And uh, when I color my eyes, I actually don't like making my eyes perfect circles. A lot of people haven't noticed this, but I really like oval-shaped eyes. For, for me, me personally, I know people's eyes aren't oval in real life, but it's something that I enjoy and makes me feel better. So we're just going to color some of these bitches in. And as you can tell, I already un I undo a lot, so... Sometimes when I'm lazy and I find a good eye shape, I just do that and then I just scale it up when I'm like, nope, just don't want to don't deal with it right now. So, do that. And then we're going to do the same here. And then uh, I will do what I do for soft shaded eyes in a minute because I actually do have that one be a little a little different than this. But not, not by much. It's still the same basic method. So... And remember, this is my first time kind of doing one of these things, so <laughs> I might be redoing this video in the future when I know what I'm doing. So, okay, we're going to have a darker background for the colors, just so this pops a bit more. So we're going to have, uh, for the example, I'll just make them all white. So we're going to make all the squares white, but you know, in the art world, you can make a square be whatever you want it to be. It can be anything. So, and then we're going to pick some nice colors for these because I like me some purple we're gonna do some purple eyes because I like like me some purple so okay what I do is then I make a layer with a clipped group layer so by that I make a clipping layer clipping layer which is you have your color layer down here and then you have a layer that's attached to it right here and so when you have your clipping layer it locks everything in the layer under it so you can work with it so what I always do is I go to multiply, and then I have the color picked, and then I tend to go to a closer cousin or brother or sister, whatever you want to call it on the fucking color wheel. So when I do purples, uh, depending on the type of purple, I personally like the blue purple over the uh, red purples. I'll go with a red, I'll go with multiply, and I'll stay within the same hue family. Sometimes it doesn't work and you have that, but... 
This does happen. Sometimes when you have lighter colors, so I'll go for a darker color, but in blue, so it'll pop out more. So you have the multiply layer. You do this. And then I actually tend to do it twice, where I just, come on, clip it again. So I have a darker layer. Then I take the eraser tool, and <coughs> I tend to make a crescent moon shape when erasing for each of these, because I like the look. And I do it on both ends to where... That way the original color pops through on the bottom. And then when I, when I realize it might be a little too harsh, I'll lighten up the opacity of the layer to get more of a purpley glow like that. Then when I get to the colors I like, I will just merge it down. No, not that like that. I'll merge these down while they're still in a clipping layer so they're not attached to the colored layer. Make a new one. And then we're gonna make the we're gonna do the iris. So for this example, I'm gonna have three different types. I'm gonna have the normal iris, which I'll put here. It's just a regular, you know, little oval. And then I'll have a slit here for you know your all your all your demony demony goodness. My tablet decides it wants to not be an axle. And then for here, I'm going to have it be an iris, but I'm going to have it be a, a pupilless one once I color it. So we still need a little iris here for what I'm about to do. So you're going to see it. So now to be easy, I'm going to select the blacks that I have for my iris. And then I'm going to, I have a hotkey for this, but you can uh, do it any way you want. I increase it until I think I have a good enough ring around it because I like the look of this. So since this is a tutorial, we're going to zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see it. And then I go to my unmerged clipped layer, and then I cut it. So now I'm left with this cool little effect that I really like. So we're going to get rid of this guy, because I didn't want him to have people. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to merge. And now we're going to have a Lumosity or an overlay layer or whatever you want to call it in other programs. I use Lumosity on Psi1. In Psy2, I think it's called like something else, but I don't use Psy2 that much. Photoshop, it's like overlay, it's screen, same thing. And so then I like doing this little thing. Which I tend to do to almost all of my eyes. And this is, again, more of what I'm doing when I have a cel-shaded picture. Because I like... The look of it and I always tend to do the eyes a lot of people I don't, again people have noticed I do the eyes on their own layer not when I'm doing the coloring phase and the reason for that is when I like merging everything a lot of the times with how poofy I draw hair sometimes the eyes are still covered so when I have it done like this I, you can still kind of see the color of the eyes through the hair you can see it's a lot of other works that I do so then I just add the extra, extra whites, excuse me, and then merge that down, and then I like doing fringe so it has an outline around them. Now, granted, this is a very big fringe, since I'm doing this on a very big canvas to a big scale, but normally I do it anywhere between, um, like, one to four on a normal picture. The only reason it's so high here is because it's, uh, for example... And I like what this does because it adds a cool, like, layer to the back of it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to shade the backs of the eyes because that's also the point of this tutorial. <laughs> it's not just how to do this, but it's how to do that. So um, when I normally shade, I like doing it in a different color, and then I mess with the hue and opacity later, so... I am just going to fill that one in, for example. I'm going to color this one in this way. And then I'm going to do this in this end here. Now this is obviously just a basic shading for, for the eye, how I do it. Because what I tend to do in my artworks too is if I have like 
hair or something hanging in their face, I will add the shadow for that in the picture. So it's like if this character had like a lot of hair, I would be like, okay, there's, you know, here, here will be a strand of hair kind of thing. Just so it adds more depth to the eye. So we're going to clean these up. For the circle one, it's going to be easy because I just got to you know, erase it. But... Actually, I like that I'm gonna do it more at an angle so we can get more depth in that in that e ball. And then same for here, I'm just gonna clean this up a bit because I think the shadow's too strong. And I actually do this quite a lot to try to get the, the look for what I'm going for, which I don't know why my tablet pen's being not as smooth as it normally is. I really don't know why you're being so rude. I don't know why you don't like this eye shape. I've done it before. And this is also the thing I tend to do is I tend to talk to myself quite a lot when I'm doing art. So there's that. And then sometimes, depending on how I'm doing the picture, I will have a, like, outline around it. So we'll do the select thing again, and then we'll do this. Just to add a little bit more of a, a little depth to the eye. And then we're going to select. And I mess with the hue and saturation. And I like, for my eyes, I always like going with a nice light, like, grayish blue. But... You know, sometimes you got colored sclera, so this effect can work for anything. So we'll do it with this. So we'll have that, and then we'll have these two be like a purple. Let's see, where's purple? There we go, it's a purple. And then I'll have the guy down here, he'll be like a red. Let's go, let's go with a good red. Let's see, where's red? Yeah. So see, so you can mess with it, so you can also get the coloring of your scleras done the way you want. And then that's how I do pretty much a basic cell shaded eye, but we're not just doing cell shaded eyes. We're also going to do some cell shaded ones because why not? So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm gonna get rid of that. Well, I'll use this as like a, as a template for the sizes. And then we'll keep the white just, just for tutorial sake. So we're going to go again with our good little handy dandy red. And I like using the airbrush tool for this. For soft shaded works, I like doing it this way because I feel like it gives it a softer glow. So that way it meshes more with the picture. And sometimes I have to end up doing it with a smaller brush just like before and then enlarging it. So it still keeps its eye shape and it's not too soft. But I'm going to show you how this technique works. With almost every any coloring style, so we'll do that. And then same here. And then we're gonna pretty much just do the same thing we did before with with the same technique, just with the airbrush tool instead of the pen tool, so it gives it a much more softer look. Because, yeah, this is why when I tell people, it's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's, I love coloring this stuff, but it's also, like, the easiest thing to color. So now we're going to, to save time, because I already have these picked, I'm going to just boop the little things in the background. So I'll have that purple, that purple, and that purple. I'm going to keep the colored luminosity one for later. So, okay, we're going to get rid of that. Here. Fill these bitches in. And then we're going to take the airbrush tool again. And just like before, we don't need to multiply it because I ripped the colors, but it would be the same as before. You just multiply. But instead of doing the circle, I just tend to do a flat gradient down. And I like adding depth. So I do this. And then sometimes, when I'm really feeling risky, I'll take that middle one. And I'll do the whole eye, and then I will cut the circle out. And then I will do the part where we do the pupil. So, show you what I'm talking about here. So, we're going to take the airbrush still so it keeps that 
that soft glow. And my airbrush, just basic airbrush with Psy, I didn't change any of the settings on it. So this isn't like a special airbrush, just so you know. So then you're going to erase your bits that you need. Let's give it a bit more of a softer glue. And then when it's like, yeah, that looks, that looks good. We do the same thing as before. So we're going to have... We're gonna have a nice little airbrushed pupil here. We're gonna have a nice little slit pupil here. If I can draw a line, right? And then we're gonna have no pupil here. We're just gonna leave that one like that. And so instead of selecting it, because when you select it as airbrush, it only selects the harder pixels of it. So we're gonna go to the behind layer and we're gonna take the airbrush tool and we're gonna erase around the areas we want so it adds more to it so I'll be like okay I'm gonna use an 80 and we'll get the same look that I was hoping for just in a softer glow uh, I'll still stick with 80 for this one and the reason for why I like doing the around the eye shading thing is honestly just the fact that I once saw an artist I like do it for their work and I was like oh that's really cool I really like that look and so I've used it since because, I mean, I don't really think, I mean, for some people, though, I know they're going to argue me on this, but for some people, I don't think there's really a way to, like, steal coloring styles unless you make it, like, really, 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 really original. But even then, nothing's really original anymore, so whatever. So we're going to do, now what we do for the highlights is, I like doing the same thing as before, but I like adding a line for the softer looks just to add a bit more but for oomph, oomph to it. So, and now we're going to do our little circles. And I, again, I, I keep with the airbrush tool for all of these. Just so that way it adds more for the, the coloring. Because I've done it before where I did my normal eye method. And then I would do like a cell, cell shaded, a soft shaded picture. And it would look really weird because the eyes wouldn't match the rest of the coloring style. So then, and and for the little dots, I just again I just kind of flip the dots, and then upside down, and then do the white. And I also for this one it depends on how the shading's done, but I also do like doing the fringe to it as well because I think it has a neat effect when it's on the soft shaded layer. So, since we already have our little colors picked for the shadings, we're gonna do it this way. So, where's, where, where's the white? There's the white, okay. I'm gonna fill you in. Oh, that's not what I want, I want that color. Fill you in. Fill you in. And fill you in. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of that so I have it, and then we're gonna take the airbrush tool again, and then we're just going to erase the bits we need. So just like before, we're gonna take the airbrush and just erase how we want the eye to be. Give us that nice little glow. And keep to the soft shadedness of the picture. And then what I'll tend to do in soft shaded pictures is I'll actually um, end up blurring the line art just a little bit so it doesn't look as harsh. But yeah, that's that's pretty much how I draw eyes. Is oop. I hope this helped and you guys enjoyed. And I don't know. Hopefully I'll get better doing these little tutorial things. But yeah, this is how. This is how the Michi draws eyes and colors them. So hopefully this helped someone. You guys liked what you saw. And as always, I will see you next time. Bye.